open here. So today's project is a Python project. Um, okay, so what do you need to do? So first, we need to go to this uh, API, which is this um, URL here. And you want to grab data from that API using the page 50. So basically, when you click here, you open the this API documentation. And then like this will be explaining to you how the API works, what kind of different status codes will return for you, everything you need to know about this API. Okay. And then we will be in this part, the API endpoints. What do we want? So we want to do a GET request to this API, like the jobs, the jobs part. And then like, we just want to add here the pages 50. So this is the number of the page we need. We want to load and that's it. And then we will run the example request. And this will give you how is like what URL you need to use in your GET requests. It's basically the URL have that there and then a question mark and page uh, equals to 50. So this one will be the URL you'll be using for your GET request. And then if that succeeds, we will receive a 200 code. And then what you want you to take a look, what you want you to work is like using the re uh, response body. And you see, like, this is a giant JSON uh, response. And we want you to, to grab some fields from here. Um, and for that, you need to figure out how to do that, right? Um, uh, here we have exactly the same explanation. So we'll be working with the response body. And then the same thing yes so the focus will be the response body and using the json and we have a lot of levels there so it's nested levels um so this is the first part what we need to grab from the response body is the publication uh date the job name job type job location and the company name you need to find these fields inside the json response um and then basically we will have that data, we will convert that to CSV and add to an S3 bucket. So here a little bit more explanation. You'll be creating an EC2 instance inside your AWS account. And we will build the Python project inside the EC2 using VS Code. So it will be SSH uh, from your VS Code from your local to the EC2 instance in the cloud and then inside the ec2 you will be creating the python project all the files you need okay um so you have a python script where we want you to use the requests library to make the get request to the api from that we will grab these fields from that json uh, body response then we want you to convert, because this will be a JSON file, uh, a JSON response. So we want to convert the JSON into a data frame using pandas library, which is a, a Python library. And with pandas, we want you to manipulate this data. So basically, like the company name will be the same, but you want you to cut the locations into two fields. One will be country and the other one will be city. So locations will be like a city comma country, I believe. And then we want you to, to cut this string into different fields, country and city. And then job name will be the same, job type will be the same, but date we want to, to cut because this publication date here, I think is a timestamp and we don't want a timestamp. So we want just a date. So year, month, and day. Okay, so this is the part where you'll be manipulating the data using pandas. And this should be the result. So it's a data frame with the publication date, date, job type, job, the company, 
city and country. After you have this, then we want to, to save into a, CS, a CSV file. And then the CSV file we want you to send that to a S3 bucket. And there is there are two ways to do that using Boto3, which is a Python SDK to work with AWS. Uh, so use of Boto3 and AWS credentials or attaching the IAM role to your EC2, and then EC2 will have uh, permission to, to upload data to the S3. So this way you don't need to add uh, credentials um, to, to the script. Um, and here is explaining how you can do that, but I think here we have it too, I'm not sure. But I think in this file here, we also have this part, I'm not sure. Um, so here's just explaining how you give the permissions. And so go to your IAM role and then security and then give full access role to, to S3. Um, okay, so here's the requirements. What we want, uh, what are the files we want you to, to include in your Git, Git GitHub project? So uh, it's a shell script where you will be setting your virtual environment. Uh, a git ignore field, uh, Stan already explained about that. A Python script, Python run uh, script where you'll be running the, the Python code. A thumb field where you have a config parameters. Uh, a, a file to your secrets, which is .env. Uh, a shell script. So basically, we have we also want like a shell script that will be running the whole project. So we would just like in one command, you run the the I don't know init dot shell, and then that will be doing everything, you know, running the Python, um, and everything in the project. So yeah, and uh, use a shell script to control everything. So basically, it's this. Um, so uh, the Python project, we have the config file, we have the secrets file, uh, the requirements file that will be installed when you run your environment. And here is uh, are the libraries probably you'll be using, at least all the ones that we uh, talked here. So request, both open this, so then the python.env, and then an init uh, file, uh, shell file, where you'll be like creating your virtual environment, uh, the way like Stan also explained today. So updated system, installing Python and everything. And then we have like a run file where you want like to activate your Python on the script, uh, logs and error message. And here is the Python script, which is this one you are calling here and git ginar. So basically, the idea is make a get request to the API, grab the response, which will be a raw JSON data, extract that in a, as a dictionary, transfer, uh, transform that to a data frame, and also transform the fields here. Remember, like cut the location into different pieces, and then the date, timestamp to date, and then you save as a, G, uh, a CSV file and then upload that to S3. And I think that's. You guys can see my screen, right? Pretty cool. Um, so what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna
I'm going to clone that repository with the with the answers. So we have this project on, uh, I'm just going to open files, uh, this one, this one, uh, yeah, that's about it. So the, uh, the first thing what we need to do is to have this init file that basically will, uh, create uh, the expected environment for us. Uh, again, this uh, first line will basically add this uh, that snakes uh, repository, which uh, contains uh, um, different versions of Python. Um, and then we're gonna update our apt get to include it uh, into package manager. Then we will uh, use 3.8. Uh, this is not like, necessarily like to have for example but sometimes you would need to specify like specific if your if your call depends on the specific version for example as i mentioned before even certain um, standard libraries are not gonna have uh, some functions uh or will like behave differently based on the python version so it's probably like, yeah, I recommend it to, to use, uh, you know, to specify your uh, Python version, <clears throat> just to, you know, to make sure that you, like somebody else who's gonna use this code, not gonna have uh, uh, problems, right, uh, with it. Um, then we're installing the uh, 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 AWS CLI, if uh, necessarily, like in our case, because we're running it on the EC2, uh, it should be installed, uh, but again, if we are uh, sending it this code to somebody else who like is going to run it not on AWS, then it's uh, necessary to have it. Uh, but we setting up the virtual environment here, activating it. Uh, then we do the uh, requirements install, like in, sorry, installing the required libraries from the requirements.txt file. And then we deactivate the uh, the uh, the environment, and then we create this uh, 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 file, another file, right? So uh, make it like executable, and then we create the log file. So this dash p not necessarily we're not creating like a nested uh, uh, live uh, sorry folders, so it should work without p. So p stands for parent uh, parent directory, so we're not not creating any parent directory it should work uh, i believe without that uh, flag um here i'm uh, just gonna adjust something here we don't need this don't need this uh, i don't need so file file name file name so basically this is like as before we're creating a lot log file based on the timestamp and we generate this time temp timestamp with this uh, um, calling date and plus we are uh, providing the format for the for the for the date because it will be I think based on epoch if we do just date oh no it will be not epoch it will be just uh, uh, it's just different format I believe it will be uh yeah um so yeah the, then we uh uh grabbing the script because we have we have two versions of script and i will explain what each is doing uh in this case we are going to config pommel file uh it's uh here and we where we can specify what uh, Python script we're gonna run, what API call we're gonna do, what um, uh, 
a stream bucket we're gonna use, and then and then uh, use the, the, the within the bucket we need to specify the input folder as well if we want to. Um, so now we need to update this file, right? Because we like I don't have this access to this folder. Now I need to go back to my uh, my account, go to S3, um, and then. Uh, create a new bucket the uh, cloud data uh, h5 uh, and then uh, what's day today 24th force 9 2020 for example um, yeah nothing else you need to provide here create a bucket um, this is the bucket, then we copy the name of the bucket, go back here, paste it here, and then we need to create the create a folder, input, oops, create it. Uh, we have folder, this is set up, <coughs> this is default one, and we're gonna use script, the Python script run uh, version 2.py. I'm going to walk you through the script, uh, like a line by line, basically, and I'm gonna to to use uh, Colab to just uh, uh, so you guys understand the uh, what the code is doing. A new notebook, it just to like interactively like, basically show you what uh, the code is uh, doing. As I said, yeah. Uh, first thing we uh, import this uh, uh, libraries. Uh, same, we can copy it, run it. So first, first run you run. Uh, we don't need this one because we're not gonna grab the. We don't need this one. I guess we don't need these guys too for now. Uh, yeah, that's what we need. Um, so, <clears throat> so now we uh, we're gonna use request library, right? So we copy this and then change it to the, the URL that we need to call. Uh, where is the yeah, now we can return as the JSON. Uh, so now we can you know like basically what we require to do is to uh we we get this file right uh we get this payload from the api uh and now we need to extract from this payload the what we need to extract we need to extract company name locations name and then um, job name job type publication date and so on uh, so let's just like get like a few examples and to explain what is actually doing. Uh, this one. So um, we get this uh, payload and then. Uh, uh, it's basically a concise way of writing the uh, loop with the with the with the like looping like the this uh, uh, JSON payload. Uh, so basically, length uh, it's the length of the this. Um, uh, basically, we're grabbing the uh, results. Uh, if we go back to to this page, right. Call this. Oh, this is not the one. Uh, 
Um, so if you guys can see though, so this results is actually a list of um, of the uh, JSON objects. So and then it's like comma separated, I believe. So uh, here, uh, what is it? here we kind of saying the the range for like for for this loop will be the number of these uh, results and then for the each results we grabbing the the first like each one of the result and then we grab a company name company and then the name so basically if we go oh, sorry if we go back to uh, to here uh, we iterating from for this each payload and we grab the uh, company name right company and name uh, what's the com company and then within the company we grab a name and then we're doing for the each uh, for the each company name so that's how we get the list of the company names as you can see here so similarly we can do for uh, locations uh, right and uh, and then what we do here we're creating a, like a list like a dictionary uh, Or location, what location name, location name. Uh, so and then uh, company name here, company name. So grab the name of companies. Uh, I'm just gonna show you if two only, and then and then we use uh, this. Uh, um, library called collections and then we're using this uh, chain map uh, function to basically concatenate the two dictionaries so we basically can call this uh, here and then provide the company name and the location so we don't need and then what the next we're doing, we're going to use that dictionary. So, and then we convert uh, the, because it will be object of a uh, chain map. Uh, what we're doing next, we're converting into dictionary object. And then there is a function in Python or in uh, handles called from dictionary. Like, you know, when you like can do load from CSV, load from, Excel or load from you know like uh, any other uh, data format. So we can call this uh, from dictionary uh, on this uh, you know concatenated uh, dictionary format like dictionary data file data uh, variable, and uh, so that's and then we can call uh, because now it's uh, right now it's uh, pandas data frame. We can use like head ten. Uh, to see the the data frame, right? And uh... hey, Stan. Yeah. Um. So I just wanted to make sure: is this like uh, when when uh, dealing with this kind of problem, uh, especially like when requesting uh, data from APIs, and then you get a JSON? So when you parse, is this like a, a 
uh, standard process to like use it this way to use the oh. um, a dictionary key because like for example you know how in js if you don't have it's an object so if you don't if you access something a key that's i mean yeah key that doesn't it doesn't exist you get undefined so it's all cool but here you get like an attribute error so when you do like for example in uh cell 13 so when you do like results i company and name so you can get like an attribute error there right yeah yeah so but so, then you have like okay i can handle right the errors right if you if you're trying to uh ah, okay but so is this like standard practice to do it this way or you do not use uh, like the working with uh dictionary json files there is like you probably can find like a thousand different ways how to work this is not like a standard i would say way there's like ah, okay, there's okay no yeah. standards you can you can mm -hmm. use whatever you like whatever like more um uh like whatever you like you know like yeah like you think efficiently like for use for yourself you know so if you know any other methods please use this is not mm -hmm. at any extent the the standard no okay. no yeah no problem i just thought it's like uh because i know like for example some companies might not have the name right so then you, it's like you don't get anything in the name that's how the jsons yeah. right yeah. okay all right yeah. just want to make sure thank you yeah no problem um yeah then uh uh, so and then here you just basically uh, uh, um, edit the date, right? So you you take only the date from publication, and then here from the from the city you get uh, uh, right from the location you get city from the location again you get country, and then you drop the 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 location uh, column. So by um, Y axis. So yeah, this is basically because we need the city country, and that's why we need to do this uh, extra steps. And then here we're just uh, saving that data frame as a CSV file. And then here we're calling the, the sub process on the on the uh, uh, our uh, EC two, uh, right? And then then we need to update this one probably even pull it from the from the this content file but let's just uh, update it with this uh, uh hi stan yeah uh, uh in the country and the city i saw there is a, a city like some country has a, a hong kong singapore so mm -hmm. they are missing the country name because they don't have city and country like yeah you probably will have like problem here when just like uh, uh whole country right like you, yeah those row two and row three yeah and here there is though yeah definitely yeah so yeah this is not like the uh uh the best thing to you know you need to like you know design your code probably you know to handle errors or uh, uh, i was trying to put something like uh if uh data frame country is null or something but i don't know how to like i tried but it didn't work oh yeah um so if, yeah. if you go to the code uh see in the country you put the uh second um uh, you split the string and the yeah. second part you put into the country so i tried to check like if uh, uh, second part is null then keep the uh, this first first index into the country, but uh, I'm I'm not sure how to check the data frame is null or something. I tried, but it didn't work. If you can find something, please please share with us. Yeah, sure, I will. I will. Yeah. Yep, thank you. Uh, no you can you can like try uh, and catch for attribute or try and accept for attribute error. Like try uh, it one. And... It's not throwing error. It's just like uh, putting the city as the Hong Kong and country as none. So yeah. I want to change ah, okay, yeah, to yeah. the Hong Kong as yeah. well. So mm -hmm. you can then uh, reprocess the data frame. You can say, "Hey, if the if the city is none, then grab the the country name and replace that none with city." I tried that one, but it didn't work. 
Yeah. Maybe, maybe just if you find something, some link or some web page, just share yeah, it, with us. Yeah. yeah, it shouldn't be super hard. It's just like one of uh, yeah, it should be like uh, yeah. I can, I can, I can. Yeah, I can find something. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Um, so let's uh, shoot work. Let's see. Let's run this one. Stan, this is just running the init.sh. Yeah, this one just, yeah, we just uh, uh, setting up the local environment for it to run the uh, run sh. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it seems the connection is quite slow on this uh, issue too. I uh, stand one more thing. Uh, I saw in your uh, run V2, uh, there is no, you didn't pass any credential like exist key and secret key. Yeah, that's uh, that's why I want to like, discuss after I finish with version two, I want to show you the version one that you can oh. use to pass the keys because um, yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna explain the difference between those. Oh, okay, okay. thank you.
Me, I'm not sure why it's taking so long. Maybe this uh, uh, this uh, EC2 has some issues. Uh, yeah, not sure.
So I was looking for like a solution to split um, to get like the default country if it's if it doesn't find a right. Was it like Arvind? Arvind? Yep. Oh, okay, so I'll I'll send it to you the way I did it. So. Oh, thank you. Yeah, maybe it works for you. I don't know. <laughs> Let me know. I also I'm looking for it. <laughs> thank you. Yeah, I you can see it. that's that's what works for me. Sure. Thank you. Let me try. Hey guys, I think the region I'm using having problems, so I'm not entirely sure how long it's gonna take to to just run it. So it's super slow. This morning I like use it, it was super fast. I can uh, apparently the region having some problems. So uh, it's already 5 p.m. I'm not sure, guys, if you I'm not sure it's gonna how long it's gonna take to finish this uh, uh, step.
So basic idea here is to, when you use like uh, P, let's say P2 version and P1, I want to just show you. Um, so uh, here we, because we're calling it from the, the EC2, uh, we can just use sub process and then the, the EC2 should come with the uh, CLI install, but we're also installing it with, uh, with the uh, uh, with the uh, init uh, sh so yeah probably like uh, not super necessary here but yeah then we're going to calling some sub process here and then basically we're copying the file to the bucket um and in order to your EC2 to, to complete this step, you would need to go to your service, uh, sorry, to your EC2 account. Uh, and then go to IAM roles. Um, so we're not seeing, you're oh, showing sorry. you. Yes. Sorry, yeah, yeah, let me go here. <laughs> so, Go to I am roles. And then um, under roles, we need to, uh, I guess, I think, create a new role. Uh, then we're going to use AWS service. So meaning uh, we're creating a service account, not the user account, but service account. So the difference between the user and service, user can use it's just user, it's dedicated to the user, and service is usually dedicated to like application level. In this case, we say we want this service uh, role to be executed by EC2. Then we click next. Then we look for S3 because we, well, we need to work with the S3 services, right? We need to copy this file to S3. Uh, why there is no S3? Should be S3 admin. Um, Yeah, and then you need to, like, for example, give it full access uh, so that your EC, EC2 can access S3 services, like to upload file, delete file, and list files. So then we go next, uh, full S3 access, for example, and then that's what, like, uh, JSON. Uh, file is going to look like to to provide that permission to as uh, to describe that policy I guess to for the role. Then we create a role uh, again. Yeah, the role is created. Then we go back to your EC two, um, and then instances. Uh, and then, for example, this one, we go and go to actions, security, modify AMI, I am sorry. And then uh, we select the one we created. Uh, let's. Uh, I think it's some. Oh, yeah, it's this one. I, I misspelled it. OK. Uh, and then we basically attaching this role to IAM for this uh, instance. So now if we run this sub uh, process, uh, we don't need to specify keys because this, this uh, EC2 instance within the, the, the account, it has the CLI install, and now it has the permission to work with uh, S3 services. So that this thing will like, work that's uh, version two so when you're running within your uh, ec2 a uh, version version one you can you can run locally from your ubuntu uh, vm and the difference here you provide the you need to use uh, bottle tree 
and then uh, you need to provide the uh, create a, create a client S3 and provide keys here. So there is a difference, and then uh, when you provide those uh, secret keys and uh, access key here, uh, which you can put to your dot n file uh because this is secret so you, you, you do you, you don't need to like you you shouldn't share them and then you will be able to upload this uh job csv file to the to the uh, to the bucket any questions here sorry guys yeah I, I don't know why it's it's like taking forever something definitely something is up with that uh region right now like I, I I created another EC2 and still it's super slow. It shouldn't be like that. Yeah. Any any question, guys? So if not, let's call it day. Um, yeah, and uh, yeah, and I had a question. Start. Sure. So. Uh, I wasn't really understanding the sub process part. Like, how how is it able to access the key automatically? I, I didn't get that. Sub process is not taking keys; it's okay. using service account. So, UAEC2 instance. I just show you create. We're creating a service account uh, role, attaching mm -hmm. that service account role to your EC2. Okay. So, therefore, your EC2 can communicate with uh, with S3 uh, on the service account level. So you don't need to provide keys here. That's the difference between one and two. Uh, does it make sense? So you're saying you added a user role already on the EC2? Uh, not, not the user role, service account level role. OK. Yeah. And then if I go back to my EC2, you, I will see there is a role attach, which is uh, says full, should be S3, I misspell it, uh, full S3 access. You see the role attach here. So that's mean this EC2 can talk to S3 services. Oh, okay. okay. If you don't do that, if you don't do that, then it's gonna fail because there is like, it doesn't have permission to talk to uh, any any services within your account. Oh, okay. Okay. So in version number one, you like say you run it locally, or you can run it from like EC2 to like EC2 instance. Uh, but instead of like attaching the, the policy, you would need to provide secret access key and key, right? So this is more like a user level uh, access, and this one more like application level access. Access, okay. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. Any any other questions? Sorry guys for the for the issue. Uh, it's actually probably downloaded right now, but yeah, it's. Uh, I think I explained already everything. Uh, yeah. Oh yeah, I need to update the bucket. Uh, the bucket, 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 S3. Uh, bucket. Yeah, if I go now to uh, S3, this bucket, uh, the data is listed here. And then like, if you want to do like an extra thing, you can uh, use Athena, for example, uh, sorry, glue, uh, glue, and then 
just gonna take you like one or two minutes of your time, then you can uh, get started. Uh, I, we need to create a crawler, uh, crawlers. Are uh, you guys gonna do it? Like we're gonna do it a lot for midterm project. I'm just gonna quickly show you how we can access the data in, uh, in uh, Athena. Crawl select location. It's going to take a few seconds. Yeah, we can, we will uh, discussing what's actually happening here later. I just uh, want to show you how, like, uh, within AC2, uh, sorry, AWS, you can like easily access the, this data with Athena. Sorry, taking some time. Okay, I think it's done. Uh, let's see if the, the database is available. Uh, Yeah, so I think there is a glitch. Some well, the table was not created. Probably this something. Yeah, I don't know for some reason the the table was not created. Sorry, guys. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, I can I can troubleshoot that later too. And uh, yeah, and. Uh, see if I can fix that thing. No problem. Thank you. Yeah, thank you everyone. Sorry for going extra a little bit. Uh, have a great weekend everyone. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye, have a great weekend.